My family's net worth was not only wiped out, but we owed the brokerage houses money. This was my first experience with the buy and hold strategy that has once again become so popular with Wall Street. So a bit of background is in order. In the late 1950s, my father could have been the poster child for the American dream. He was 42 years old, had sold his textile business for millions and was retired. And in order to keep himself busy, he invested in the stock market. Anyway, after my dad invested all his cash, brokers introduced him to a new investment technique, margin. Jack, we can buy twice the amount of companies by using the stocks in your portfolio as margin. You'll make double the amount of money when stocks go up. Remember, stocks always go up if you hold them long enough. Well, this made sense to my dad, and he went along with the strategy. However, in May 62, my dad went bankrupt. On the day my mother was being operated on for cancer, the brokers who told my father that stocks always go up if you hold them long enough were mass liquidating his portfolio to meet margin calls. My family's net worth was not only wiped out, but we owed the brokerage houses money. This was my first experience with the buy and hold strategy that has once again become so popular with Wall Street. By the early 1980s, I had started and sold a small business, Dogtown Skates, and found myself gravitating toward Wall Street. After a stint at Drexel Burnham, I went off my own and attempted to replicate my dad's success. And lo and behold, by 1987, I had become a big picture buy and hold investor as well. I was making great money until October 87, when the buy and hold strategy, the buy and hold curse, I should say, hit another member of the Cooper family. Fortunately, I did not go bankrupt, but I did get hurt, and I learned a bitter lesson, just as my father had 20 years earlier. So I set out on a quest to create a methodology to beat the stock market. My fear of the markets forced me to hone my timing and stock picking with precision. What I found is that in markets, it takes fear to induce respect. In my experience, in this game, only the humble survive. I learned you don't play macho man with the market and to respect risk. My breakthrough came in the early 1990s after struggling <clears throat> after the 87 crash. I was fortunate enough to meet someone who had amassed a fortune short-term trading, but he had no rules he could explain to me. That was the beginning of my quest to create a rules-based strategy, what I called the hit and run methodology. It's based on the idea that risk has to be measured not just by how much percentage loss you're willing to assume on a position, but by how much time you're exposed to risk. It is designed around PE, not price earnings, not price earnings ratios, but pinpoint entries. If you can time your entry to coincide when a stock is going to pivot, it does a lot to instill emotional capital as well as financial capital. Getting into the business, most everything I read and most traders I talked to said the key to success was trend following. However, buy and hold, in my opinion, is just another way of saying follow the trend. But buy and holders don't have a way to determine when the trend bends, so they continue to buy and hold. If you're not in your 20s and are saving for retirement, this can be a disaster because history shows that sometimes it takes 25 years for the market to come back to old highs after a bear market hits. That's not been the experience this century when we've only had two to three year bear markets and the market came back to make new highs. I believe the markets are returning to its normal state, that is a state of volatility. February was the wake up call. If you have pinpoint entries and timing and adhere to the discipline of stops and have an uncle point for when you don't adhere to your stops, it's, it's, it's gonna be your kind of market. It's gonna be a trader's market. With a set of principles that treat speculation like a business rather than a fascination, every person can beat the market every year. That's what I'm here to tell you. Most don't believe it. You can only perform up to the level you believe you can perform, however. Fear is what holds every person back from realizing their true potential. Fear of failure, fear of regret, embarrassment, the unknown, you name it. This game is three-dimensional chess, not checkers. You have to be thinking about the next moves down the line your opponent may make not just the way the chessboard looks right now. As legendary trader Bernard Baruch said, successful speculation is about anticipating the anticipators. There's a great little movie called The Suicide King starring Christopher Walken, one of my favorite actors. He plays a mafia don who gets kidnapped by some uh, college students for ransom. 
tied up, Christopher Walken says to them, gentlemen, the cards you are holding are merely dumb luck. Your success depends on your ability to read your opponent. That's the market. The second part of my principle, my process is that I've learned that only the humble survive in the markets because they have a healthy respect for the game. They know markets can turn on a dime. Most traders cannot. I learned not to play macho man with the market, as I said before. You need to have a healthy ego to suit up and go into battle in the markets every day. But the trick of the trade is not letting your ego needs get in the way of your making money. To some, admitting they are wrong is more upsetting than losing money. They are looking for validation and their need to be right is greater than their need to make money until they blow up. The market is a dangerous arena to look for validation. It has no idea if you are winning or losing. So I always like to pat myself on the back when I take a loss because I adhere to my stop rather than say to myself, let me give it a little more room. Let's see what's going to happen. It's human nature to do this, but we have to follow process and become like a winning machine. I also always pat myself on the back when I get back into a stock after being stopped out, if the setup is revalidated. Because if you stop and think about it, that's the most bullish thing a stock can do, revalidate a setup. As I always like to say, the second mouse gets the cheese. Thirdly, part of my process, and uh, the third principle that uh, I think is the most important, is you've got to focus. The more you try to see in this game, often the less you see. You've got to narrow your field of vision and focus to be successful trading. There's just too much, too many stocks, too much noise, too much to be overwhelmed by. You have to have a watch list so you can glean stocks personality throughout the day and, and watch their behavior day over day. Relative strength, how a stock is acting in a down market like Twitter today and, and a deeply uh, red market. They're saying something. Trying to see too much and do too much is just a function of greed. Fourth, sometimes the hardest thing to do as a trader is nothing, but patience pays. It pays to wait for the right pitch rather than swing at everything that moves. I know, I used to do that back in the 80s. Finally, you must have a quiver of strategies that maps various contingencies and patterns. My methodology has strategies to identify buying and selling climaxes and reversals, pullbacks, continuation setups, and trend days and breakouts over key levels. In short, my methodology is designed to be opportunistic. I found that often people will say to me, if your methods are so good, why teach them? Honestly, and I mean this seriously, writing my books and teaching my strategies every day is the most selfish endeavor I've ever undertaken. This is because doing so has forced me to continue to learn and, and by putting my rules and analyzing setups every day, uh, it, it forces me to stay on my feet and keeps my uh, feet to the fire. It keeps me sharp. These are some of the strategies. One, two, three, pullback is a... Uh, a continuation strategy and a strongly trending name. The Holy Grail buy setup is uh, is a pullback, another continuation, a pullback to the uh, rising 20-day moving average. And, a, and an NR seven day is the narrowest range in seven day is a volatility setup. Stocks breed, they contract, and then they expand again. These are some of the continuation setups that we use every day. There's been an extraordinary absence of volatility in the last seven years. Not coincidentally, since the Fed initiated its last round of monetary ease called QE3. This perpetuated a manufactured market, in my opinion, an abnormal market, a calm market, one where volatility was subdued. But now the Fed is on the march of QT or quantitative tightening. Volatility is actually the normal state of the market. In February, we got a taste of the market reverting to its normal self. Opportunities on both sides of the market are going to increase along with volatility. Historically, low interest rates, 
that pushed market part that uh, pushed market participants to search for yield perpetuated the short volatility trade that blew up in February. Low interest rates also backstopped corporate buybacks, with corporations borrowing at next to nothing to buy back their stock. This also underpinned the one-way volatility trade and the one-way ETF Lazy River trade that we've seen for the last seven to eight years. However, many market luminaries such as Paul Tudor Jones, Ray Dalio, and the bond king Bill Gross believe opportunity and a reversion to this inherent, natural, and normal historic, historic volatility in the markets is coming back. Even if you believe the economy is on a new growth trajectory, then excess corporate cash will go into capital expenditure, not buybacks. This will also increase short-term opportunities on both sides of the market as volatility increases. If you don't think the economy is going to remain strong and that a bear market may be on the table, then volatility is going to increase in a bear market also, offering greater opportunity on both sides of the market than we've seen in recent years. This is because some of the sharpest rallies actually occur within bear markets. My methodology is based on pattern analysis largely. If you want to make money, trade patterns and price. The quickest way to lose money is to listen to opinions. As I always say, speculation is observation, pure and experiential. Thinking isn't really necessary and often just gets in the way. My methodology allows you to avoid the disastrous uh, situations associated with buy and hold and will give you a set of tools to use to profit from the stock market for the rest of your life.